Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. This is the second video in the Machine Learning with Imbalanced Data series. In part one, we discussed that the class imbalance problem occurs when the number of samples in one class is far less than the total number of instances in other classes. For example, in the binary classification problem on the thyroid data set, the minority class is positive class and the majority class is negative class. If we apply traditional machine learning algorithms, they are likely to predict most labels as negative or the majority class, giving us misleading accuracy results. Therefore, we discuss important evaluation metrics such as precision and recall to properly identify the class imbalance problem. Now, in this video, you will discover a crucial strategy that you can use to deliver improved and reliable results when facing imbalanced datasets. A few more videos on this topic are also coming soon, so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Let's have a quick review of the classification problem that we had in the previous video. We imported the thyroid data set and the data matrix is called X. The target values, plus one and negative one, or positive and negative, are given in a one-dimensional array called Y. Using the train test split function from scikit-learn, we use 70% of the data for training and the remainder for testing. In the test data set, we have 78 samples in the positive or minority class, and there are 1,054 samples in the negative or majority class. As we can see, out of 78 samples in the positive class, the machine learning algorithm correctly classified only 43 samples, and the recall value is relatively low, which is equal to 0.55. Therefore, we must find a way to improve the predictive power for detecting rare but significant healthcare events. Methods for addressing class imbalance can be divided into three main categories. The first category is data level pre-processing methods that operate on the training dataset and change its class distribution using resampling techniques. These methods aim to alter datasets in order to make the standard machine learning algorithms work. The other category covers cost-sensitive learning methods where we keep the training dataset unchanged and assign different penalties to the misclassification of samples. Therefore, this will cause the machine learning algorithm to pay more attention to samples from the minority class. The third strategy to tackle the class imbalance problem combines multiple techniques from one or both categories that we just mentioned. Hence, this category is broadly referred to as ensemble learning and it can be viewed as a wrapper to other methods. In this video, we focus on cost-sensitive learning methods and their implementation. In future videos, we will cover the other imbalanced learning methods. Note that in machine learning, the goal is to minimize the cost function or loss function. In cost sensitive learning, we modify the cost function to take into account that the cost of a false positive and a false negative may not be the same. Here we have the standard cost function for the logistic regression classifier, also known as binary cross entropy loss. In logistic regression, we call the positive class 1 and the negative class 0, instead of negative 1 that we used before. This is just for convenience and doesn't really matter what numerical values we assign to each class as long as we use two distinct numbers. Here yi is the actual label 
and y hat i is the predicted probability, which is a real valued number between 0 and 1. Having that said, the total cost function for n training samples can be decomposed into two terms, one for the minority class with actual labels yi equal to 1, and the other one for the majority class with yi equal to 0. For the modified cost function, we define two class weights, w1 and w0, to incorporate the significance of each class in the cost function. wj is defined as the total number of samples over the number of classes, which is 2 here, times the number of samples in each class j. Next, you will see how using these two class weights can help the machine learning algorithm to pay more attention to the underrepresented class. To see the difference, let's first look at the case of balanced dataset. In this case, we have n1 equals to n0, and they each contain half of the total number of data points. So that's why we have n over 2 for both number of samples in class 1 and class 0. If we plug in these two values into the equation that we had before, then for w1, we find n over 2 times n over 2. And if we cancel terms here, we see that w1 is equal to 1. And similarly, w0 is also equal to 1, which means that here, w1 and w0 are identical, which means that we are putting the same weight or the same penalty for making mistakes in terms of false positive and false negative. However, if these two classes are imbalanced, meaning that let's say the minority class here has 10% of total number of samples and the majority class has 90%, that's how we show by n over 10 and 9 times n over 10, then we can plug in these values into the equation for the weight parameter and we can see that w1 is equal to n over 2 times n over 10, which if we simplify this, we get 5. And then the weight for class 0 would be 10 over 18, which is a number less than 1. So this means that in this case, the weight for the minority class is greater than the weight for the majority class. And therefore, if we look at the cost function that we have, this means that we are paying more attention to the minority class. Now, let's see how we can implement this in scikit-learn. So if you remember, we imported x and y, and then we used train test split. And previously, when we used logistic regression, we used default values. But now, because we are working with an imbalanced data set, we can use the option that is called class underscore weight. And here, we use the option that we set this equal to balanced. So this means that now, scikit-learn is going to use the formula that we had for wj and find those weights for the majority and minority class. And after that, we use dot .fit to train the machine learning algorithm, and then we use dot .predict to make predictions. As mentioned in part one, we can give the actual labels and predicted labels to plot the confusion metrics, and the one on the left is the confusion matrix for the case that we didn't use those weights. And the one on the right, we see the confusion matrix for this example that we just solved here. 
and you can see a huge difference between these two cases. Let's look at the second row of these matrices. The one on the left, which is for the case that we didn't use cost sensitive learning. If you remember, we had 78 positive cases and we only classified 43 of them correctly. However, on the right, which is the confusion matrix for this example, out of 78 examples, we find 69 of them correctly. So this is a huge improvement in terms of detecting rare events in your dataset. However, this improved result comes at the cost of losing accuracy for the first row of these two matrices. Previously, we did a great job of identifying negative samples, but now if you compare with the previous case, the cost-sensitive learning method compromises accuracy in that respect a little bit. To be precise, we can find precision and recall for each case. So you remember that previously the precision value was 0.78 and the recall value was 0.55. But in this case that we use cost sensitive learning, precision is 0.35 and recall is 0.88. So what does this mean? So one thing that we can see immediately is that when we improved recall, then the precision value got lower. And that's usually the trade-off that we have. So we can't improve precision and recall at the same time. When we increase one, then the other one will decrease. And the one that we can see here that we use cost-sensitive learning makes much more sense because the reason that we are trying to develop a machine learning model is to identify rare events, which means that the cases that they are positive and they have certain medical condition. So here we are doing a much better job in terms of uh, finding positive cases. I hope you found this video useful. In future videos, we will talk about other approaches to tackle the class imbalance problem, including data level pre-processing methods, meaning that we can use oversampling or undersampling techniques. And we will also talk about ensemble learning techniques. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe.